Okay. Um, this is the meeting of the Rules and Grossman and, and, and Credentials Committee meeting, and I didn't say it in the proper order, but anyway, we are resuming a meeting that we had yesterday because um, we took a recess, and that, was, that meeting um, was yesterday, Wednesday, May 27th, and we recessed until today at 3 o'clock because we had board bill 13 before us, and we didn't have time um, to properly go through this bill because we had other commitments. Um, so we are, uh, we don't need a roll call, I, I, I don't think. Um, is that right, Mr. Clerk? Or do, uh, Madam Clerk, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't need a roll call because we already had one, is that correct? Right, I do believe we wouldn't need a roll call, but I'll double check. All right, that. I don't think we do. Because um, I can um, visually, um, we can do what's called a quorum call that we just call, we call the, it, it's still called a roll, but that's just to make sure everybody here, and it's called a quorum call. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can do that just for the record to make sure we have a quorum. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Alderwoman Howard? Yes. <laughs> yes. All the women Hello. present. All the Todd. All the Todd, you're muted. I come back to him. Chairwoman Tyus. Present. All the Todd. Present. Chairwoman, you have four present. Thank you. Um, as I said, we are resuming our meeting from yesterday in which we had a recess. Before us is uh, board bill number 13. Um, the primary sponsor was Alderman Jeffrey Boyd. Um, and the board bill is recommended by the Parking Commission and the Board of ENA for the transfer of the sum of $5 million from the Parking Meter Fund to the General Rev Reserve Fund of the City of St. Louis to help offset expenditures from the General Revenue Reserve Fund, I'm sorry, from the General Reserve Fund and necessitated by the COVID-19 um, pandemic and the extraordinary costs incurred by the city in its efforts to protect the health and well-being of the public. It contains an emergency clause. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Did someone say something? Hello? Hello. Go ahead, all the women. Somewhere from STA. I, okay. Go ahead. I heard some background. I didn't know if that was somebody telling me to stop or what. No, no, you're good. Still. Okay. okay. All right. And okay. so um, we have with us the, uh, Madam Treasurer Tashara Jones. Her, I don't know what your title is, Mr. Boyd, but one of her executive assistants. That's what I'll give you that title. And then uh, some his uh, Mr. Uh, Brandon Comer, who is a principal at C Comer Capital Group. And they came to speak a little bit about uh, their concerns about this bill. Um, and also I, I, I spoke at length with uh, Mr. Jared Collins, who works for the board uh, and read both of their financial analysis. And so I, he said he, he needed to, he's been with Ways and Means all day. Um, and I did email to each committee member uh, both the one from Comer Capital Group and the financial analysis from Mr. Ger Ger Gerard Holland. Ooh. And so anyway, so um, uh, the, the uh, treasurer has something she wants to say. So Madam Chair, I'm sorry, Madam Treasurer, if you want to uh, uh, explain to us why you have concerns about this bill. And also Mr. Boyd and Mr. Comer will be uh, working in connection with her. So if you could unmute there. Um, Mike, I'd appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the committee, for having me this e this afternoon. Um, as uh, our financial advisor explained yesterday, and then also uh, was um, the um, as he explained yesterday, the uh, five million dollar transfer would put us below uh, three hundred and sixty five days of operating expenses in our reserves. 365 days is the recommendation from our creditor uh, 
uh, in order to keep our credit rating intact. And um, he also mentioned that later this year, we are looking at uh, refunding or refinancing an existing bond issue uh, that could bring us some significant savings. And our and if our credit rating is right. downgraded, that uh, refunding opportunity or refinancing opportunity could be in jeopardy, um, and we wouldn't uh, see any savings, and we wouldn't be able to complete that transaction. Uh, the other reason I wanted to bring to you today um, of my concern with this bill is. If it's it's moving savings, it's moving money from one savings account to another, and uh, and if it in the true spirit of the bill, it's supposed to be the COVID nineteen related expenses, and if that's the case, then we should be using this money towards direct expenses that our community needs at this moment. Like uh, you know, there are very few childcare options available for people right now. Um, there, people are suffering with uh, not being able to pay their rent. Um, we don't have increased contract tracing in, um, in minority and uh, communities where people of color are, are disproportionately affected by this disease. And this also, if we spend it for COVID related expenses, then that makes it reimbursable. And having it as a reimbursable expense is a better position for our bondholders as well as our creditors, rather than just moving money from one savings account to another. Uh, there's no transparency then if you move it from one savings account to another, uh, because then uh, the mayor's office can take the money and spend it however they see fit. Um, and there's no transparency in how those monies are spent and if they are all related to COVID-19 or not. So again, I, I have no problem helping the city at this point. I just think that if we are in the true spirit of, the, of how this bill was written, if we wanna use it towards COVID-19 related expenses, then it should be used for that, not moved from one savings account to another. Um, Autowoman Green, do you have any, can you unmute please? Autowoman Green, do you have any questions for the uh, treasurer? No questions. Alderman, I'm sorry, Alderwoman Howard, do you have any questions for the treasurer? Alderwoman Howard. No, I don't. No, I don't. I have no questions. Okay. Sorry. It just took me a minute to get my no mute button undone. <laughs> I understand. Alderman Todd, do you have any questions mm -hmm. for the uh, treasurer? No, I do not have any. Uh, okay. Yeah, I I Thank you. I do. Um, so you said that if it's a COVID related expense, we can get reimbursement. How does that work? So the city has already been allocated approximately $35 million from the federal government through the CARES Act. Uh, that money is currently sitting in an account. Um, and at last check on the city uh, transparency portal, uh, only $2 million is being used. Um, and so the CARES Act allows for direct reimbursement of direct expenses related to uh, COVID-19 or to the pandemic. So what is your, if you were in, in a better world, or, or what would you suggest should be done if we don't move this money over to uh, our account? Well, what, how would we pay for these expenses? Directly from that fund? Um, from the $35 million? Yeah, we can pay for it directly from that fund and, and then that would, you know, yeah, exactly. We would, uh, so if we're spent, if, if I'm spending the $5 million that's been requested towards COVID related expenses, then that gets reimbursed from that fund. And then we also don't know, don't yet know the full picture of all of the uh, support that's going to come from the federal government. They are still debating an additional bill for, uh, to I'm listening. Additional, um, that's why I'm resources for state don't and don't you want something to drink sweetie um carol you need to uh meet oh, your... i'm sorry okay. okay i'm sorry madam treasurer go ahead yeah i was just saying we still don't yet know the the full extent of uh, uh additional resources that could be provided by the federal government they are debating a bill right now for additional <laughs> local governments okay excuse me carol I, it didn't I, mute I, I, I know, I know. I'm having a hard time. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's all right, Carol. You got your grandbaby. That's great. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Go ahead, that, Madam Treasurer. That's it. That we we could still get more money from the federal government was my last. One. Okay. Um. So my question is the um because I talked to Mr. Hollins and a part a lot of his uh report agrees with what you're saying. Now, he th he thinks that you, the two sides should sit down, but um. My understanding from the alderman, why he wants to move it from your reserve to his and from Mr. Holland, is that um, our reserve is so low and that we don't, we really don't have it up to the uh, point where we're supposed to have it. And your reserve is very high. Can you speak to that point at all? Yeah, just as Mr. Comer, Comer talked about yesterday, um, our uh, SMP, which is our ratings agency, recommends that we keep at least 365 days of operating expenses in our reserves. Uh, once you take away this $5 million, it goes down to approximately 292 days. And we have been spending our reserves uh, thus far during the pandemic. Uh, it's not that you know, our reserves are just sitting over in an account unused. You know, we have had to also spend our reserves uh, because it's like a paycheck. If you're not getting paid, um, you still, you, your expenses are still coming in and you still have to pay for those expenses. So we're still paying our employees. Uh, we're still lights on utilities. Um, our vendors still need to be paid. Um, our, you know, it still needs to be paid. So we are still drawing, we're drawing down on our reserves right now. Okay, so in talking with Mr. Hollins and then reading his uh, report, on the second page in the last paragraph, he talks about if the Parking Commission had a target level for its unrestricted reserves, determining potential transfer opportunities from the parking fund to the general fund would become much easier to determine. So do you have a target level for your unrestricted reserves? And is that what you're talking about when you talk about the 200, I mean, the 365 days? Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, the target level of reserves for our industry, which is transportation, is actually 600 days. Um, and through our last review, and Mr. Comer, correct me if I'm wrong, um, our last review, we, um, they, s and gave us a target number of 365 to maintain. That, that's correct, Madam Treasurer. Um, again, to be at that median, it would be higher, um, but given the need to help the city, uh, particularly when we did the $10 million transfer, we tried to establish what a floor would be um, that we had to maintain in order to maintain the rating. And that's where we were able to work with S&P and come up with the 365 days. So that would be a floor that wouldn't put, keep us at the median of the uh, of the sector. But in order to help the city, we did come up with that as a floor. And therefore, the parking division established that as a matter of policy that reserves efforts would be made for reserves never below 365 days. And the 600 days come from which industry are, are you being included under? I'm sorry, Madam Tre Treasurer. Transportation. Okay, and and is that written down any place? I, I can you know? provide you, Madam Treasurer, I mean, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, with a copy of the SMP report that, that shows that for this sector, because they downgraded, uh, or I'm sorry, they put on revised outlook to negative all of the municipalities in that sector just based on what's happening with COVID. And they identify in there the levels of liquidity uh, for the sector, uh, as well as some other useful information. So I'd be more than happy uh, to give it to the community to, to uh, pass on to the committee. Okay, and is it my understanding, I would like that please, and for the committee, is it my understanding also that um, they really want you to have 600 days, but um, 365, they're doing that because they know everybody has a COVID problem, and so they're allowing you to do it a little lower that, uh, well, really, a lot lower. And um, is that what happened? Well, the, the 600 is just, just the average for the industry. Okay. Uh, we actually oh, that's an lower. average. We went lower. That's the average. Uh, we went lower when we did the, the $10 million transfer. And really what they were trying to ensure was that 
you know, the park division being an enterprise system, um, they recognized the potential for the city's general fund to need additional revenues, but they wanted to ensure that it would never be done to a, to a tune that would impact the ability of the parking division to continue to operate and meet its obligations and have sufficient reserves. And so that's where okay. the 365 uh, came in. Okay. Um, and um, let's see what else I had. So when was the $10 million taken away from the parking? I believe what? two years ago. Okay. And I know you pulled your people off the street, which I agreed with, because otherwise I'd have quit my job if I was a parking meter person. I would not have been out there, so I agreed with it. I didn't understand why people didn't understand why that was important to get them off the street. Those little nickels and quarters, although important um, in the long run, was not people's lives. Um, we, give, we give all this money to football, baseball, hockey, jacks, hopscotch, everything else, but we seem to devalue lives. So I was glad that you placed a premium on people being out in that street, um, and, I, and I admire that. But I do know that does affect your bottom line, right? Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, in other cities that have e that even kept their officers on the streets have seen over a 90% decrease in revenue. So, you know, there's nothing to enforce. Um, and I also right. like to point out that one of the first COVID deaths in Philadelphia was a parking enforcement officer. Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Another big city. Okay. Okay. And so... Um, even as we open back up and we start to look at these venues that we've placed so much value on, um, that we've uh, ignored the rest of the, uh, the city of St. Louis, which I have been voting no against these things for 29 years and thought, have always made it a point to point out to people that if an emergency came up, we didn't have any money. This last $6 million that we spent for the next 40 years for the convention center is a prime example of that. That was ridiculous to me. I actually am only one of two people still at the board that was here when that was uh, voted on, and I was opposed to it then. And um, now, and then when we came back uh, last year, I guess, and uh, Alderman from the seventh sponsored that board bill, and we didn't even say we'll keep a million dollars a year to put away or to do anything. I thought that was very foolish of the city of St. Louis. Um, not only that, we didn't do, put it in for uh, fixing up uh, the problems that we have with vacant properties. And I asked the alderman all these things. Could we use this for vacant properties? Could we use this to pay raises? Could we use this to uh, have an emergency fund? Could we use this uh, for uh, other things in the city? All of which he agreed. And then we went ahead and we spent that money. So it seems like to me that we are punishing the treasurer's office for being conservative, fiscally conservative, um, which is what I want people to do. And the city has been highly irresponsible. And now we want to steal and take all your money. And I know that it's all city funds, but I am always a person that hates putting good money after bad. The city is not showing that it knows how to say no to downtown. Right now it's attempting to steal our ward capital money and they're running around getting all the men to do it. I was here when we voted, with the people voted, and the one thing we said is the city cannot use war capital money uh, for the budget, but they're going to try to do it anyway. So they just lie directly to the people's faces, and that's what I'm going to be talking about when the budget comes. They lie all the time. I never vote for the budget. I haven't voted for the budget in 29 years because what they tell you today, 10, 5 years later, it will be something different. So I want to uh, commend the treasurer's office for being fiscally uh, correct and having money. And um, so when I talked with Mr. Hollins this afternoon, um, and I asked him about that, I said, so if we take the money that they put in reserve, how does that affect the treasurer's budget? He basically agreed with everything you said. and said That's why he said his first uh, paragraph says, well, I, while I support the fund, these are the concerns that I have. And he went on to enumerate, enumerate a lot of concerns. Um, he said he believes that the transfer will increase the likelihood that the park and revenue bonds could be downgraded by Standard & Poor. And I asked him what happens when a park and revenue bonds are downgraded. And as I understand it, then it costs us more money to, uh, to borrow. Uh, it costs us more to borrow. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Then he went on to say the city's parking revenue bonds are only secured by the revenue of the parking division and are not general obligations of the city. As such, bondholders of the city's parking revenue bonds have only a claim on parking division related revenue. As you move funds from the parking fund to the general fund, you weaken the balance sheet position of the parking division, which could result in a downgrade. And, he, and what really um, um, appalled me, he said, holders of parking revenue bonds and standard and poor have become uh, accustomed to the parking division holding a large unrestricted reserve, which has reached over $20 million in the past years. The trend of the declining unrestricted reserves due to the past $10 million in general funds transfer and the proposed $5 million transfer to the general funds could result in a downgrade of the city's parking revenue bond. He also went on to express, secondly, the parking commission has not set a target level for its unrestricted reserve funds like that the city has done. So you're telling me that's not quite right, that you really do have a target level and that your target level is uh, 300 days or so, 365 days. And, and okay, right, okay. And that's, and you said that was set by Standard & Poor's, did you say? Yes, Standard & Poor's, yes ma'am, our rating okay. is. Okay, and it says that that target could, could take into consideration any future maintenance needs of current parking structures, potential new construction of parking structures, bond ratings, targets with inputs from Standard & Poor and rainy day funds to offset uh, downturns in parking revenues during recession. So um, is that correct? Would that affect, if we take these $5 million, would that affect maintenance needs of current parking structures, potential new construction of parking structures, bond rating targets? Is that all of the things that could be uh, affected if we take $5 million more from you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that's, this comes from our person. Yeah, I, and, and our uh, industry, because it's, it's heavily, re, it heavily relies on sporting events and people parking their cars, you know, going to sporting events. And right now we have no idea when that industry, when the sporting industry is coming back to pre-pandemic levels. Okay, so even though you might have people back on the streets, you won't be having the kind of uh, revenue stream that you have had in the past. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you don't know when that might change, depending on how many people decide that they're comfortable with hanging out at the stadium. Right. Although after seeing what happened in uh, Lake of the Ozarks this weekend, those people are special to me. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> and I won't be down there anytime soon. As an elected official in the city of St. Louis, they won't see me down there because I think that's uh, uh, not a good thing to do. Um, yeah. So, so um, in, re in ending, Mr. Uh, uh, Gerard Holland said, I would recommend that the Parking Commission set a minimum and a maximum level for unrestricted revenue, reverse funds which take into consideration its unique capital and operating needs as well as the bond rating target set by the parking commission. What I hear from you is you've already done that. That's what you've been trying to say. Yeah, we go a according to what the bond uh, ratings agencies tell us is, is the level that we should be setting or a floor that we should be setting in. Okay. And I'm sorry, Mr. Boyd, did you have something to say? Just, sure. I, I just wanted to clarify something that Mr. Hollins wrote about the parking commission setting a target. It's the parking division that's really the entity that's being rated by the agencies. So it's not, there is no parking commission bond, you know, policy because the parking division is the entity that holds the debt and based upon, we have as the treasurer stated, set a policy uh, with standard and pours, and that's contingent upon our rating, our, our last rating. Um, I did have a question, if Madam Chair would allow me to entertain, with all of this relevant information that did not make it into uh, either the committee discussion or the floor discussion, is there a fiscal note for this bill? And is there any way that this type of information can be uh, placed in the fiscal uh, 
Just you just uh, stole my last thunder. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. There absolutely is not, <laughs> okay. which is required and which we ask for. Absolutely, there's no fiscal note attached to it, and that's what you're doing your job now. Um, Alderwoman Green, did you get a fiscal note? Because the chair didn't. Okay. Uh, I don't think anybody did. There's no fiscal note attached to this. Alderwoman no fiscal Green? note. Alderman Todd, did you get a fiscal note? Okay, I don't think we have one. I'm not going to go through uh, the Okay, and Alderman Howard, did you get a fiscal note to this bill? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, so at this point, we don't have something that we should have, which is a fiscal note. Um, and the alderman knows that he's supposed to have these things. Uh, last year, I would run around, uh, last term, I would run around and call people um, and try to fix everything. Um, I, I was disappointed that the alderman came and um, was uh, critical of our committee because I think our committee does a good job and tries to be fair. Um, but I'm going to stop giving people passes. Um, so I'm not going to entertain a motion to pass this board bill out with a due pass recommendation. And I will tell you, I voted no against the bill. I don't think it's a good bill. Um, and, um, but I do still try to be fair. I voted no on the stadium bill, but, and soccer stadium, and did I work my little head off to get it out because it shouldn't be uh, just me saying no. But in this case, when you don't have a fiscal note, um, then that's something important when you're talking about moving $5 million. And so I cannot recommend that this board bill be passed out with a due pass recommendation. Um, we have to, uh, according to the charter, we're supposed to uh, do a, uh, a recommendation. Mine would be do not pass. And that's the only motion that I'm entertaining is a do not pass. And if we don't have that, we don't, then um, we don't have anything because I'm not going to vote for a due pass without a fiscal note. And I will open it up to the committee to discuss. Alderwoman Green? Um, I would say that I think we should um, probably just hold the bill again um, and ask for a fiscal note and ask for that explanation of the fiscal note um, because we're, we should not be passing out something. Um, without that, and I do know that in the past, um, if a bill has been brought to us without a fiscal note, rather than go than saying do not pass, we have just held the bill until that financial information is given to us. And I would usually say that, but the alderman says he wants to go strictly by the rules. He challenged what we could do. We have been stretching things for all the people to make it work for them. But if he wants to go strictly by the rules, then I will. He won't like it, okay? Um, so that's his choice of what he wants. So if we hold it, he will come out on the floor and say we didn't go by the rules. So the rules said we're supposed to get them out. Nobody else complains about it because they know we try to get the board bills out and we're really fair about that. But since he complained about it as though we were doing something wrong to him because I allowed Madam Treasurer to speak, which I never would go to his committee and try to tell him how he should run his committee. I'm very respectful in front of his committee. Um, so our rules said that we're supposed to get them out by the next Friday, and we either got we got a do not pass, a pass, or a no comment. I can't do a no comment because you didn't have everything you're supposed to have. So. I'm not going to entertain it. I'm going to give the alderman just what he wants and is to go strictly by the rules because we really have been trying. I think this committee is great. I think we've done a good job of setting aside our personal feelings um, to do what was in the best interest of the rest of the board. But when an alderman starts to whine to me about they want it just what it is, then I'm going to give them gonna just, give what, them they just what they want. Um, Alderman, Alderwoman Howard. I, I agree with the Alderwoman from the 15th. I think that for consistency, we should allow him the opportunity to attach the fiscal note as we have in the past. Uh, otherwise, I think it does become personal. Um, if you look at what we've done in the past, I mean, this committee did not function for a long time and we've always allowed people the opportunity to put their things there. 
Now, if we want to change that, I think we need to do that consistently and, and not do it because um, somebody said something that ir irritated us. So I think for consistency and fairness that we give them the opportunity to attach the fiscal note. Thank you. And so, thank you. So I will say again, it's not that it just irritated me, it's because he requested that we, I want the rules. Okay, this is the rules. The rules, are not, we really stretched them by allowing people to come back and do this. If he wants the rules, then we're going to do them. Here's our rules. I'm very good at this, okay? Our rule says that we have to do it by the next Friday after it was sent to us. That would be now, okay? So if he wants us to do it by the rules, we got two things. Do not pass. I'm three things. Do pass, do not pass without recommendation. Um, and so I'm, I'm all uh, game for doing it just the way he wants to. And I think he needs to come back to this committee. And he can still, that doesn't mean it can't get passed. He can still come, do a lot of things. But I think he needs to be careful about uh, what he wishes because this committee has worked very hard to pass out many people's things that we didn't like. Alderman Todd. I think we, uh, I agree with um, Alderman Howard and Alderman Green that uh, in, okay. the past, in the past we've allowed um, uh, people to uh, submit a fiscal note. I think we should do the same thing with uh, this bill. Uh, and how do we do it and keep the rules? That's what, since you guys all think that, then I'm open to how do we do that and, and still follow the rules? Uh, well, in my opinion, uh, we uh, should change, we should, uh, sh should uh, start following the rules uh, after, after we've, if we've, after we've passed all the bills that's been passed this week. We should go back and decide if we're going to have consistent rules for everybody. I think they should apply. But nobody else. Okay, I'm sorry, Alderman. But what if this person? Okay, so this person has asked that we follow the rules. That's what I'm doing. I, nobody else asked that. Everybody else knows that we have worked our rear ends off to get things done. How do we um, do what the Alderman asked then? Because I'm tell me how to do that. I think it appears to me that uh, <clears throat> we should uh, sometimes. Um, a, a person may, uh, another other person, out of respect for being consistent, may ask us to do something. But I think we would should compare what we've been doing in with everyone else, and then let that other person know. Don't even approach the individual, but uh, just say from now on we uh, we will cut it off here, and uh, we will do the same for everyone. I appreciate what the committee has said, and so you all don't have to vote. I am not going to leave this board bill. It, since he requir required for us to do this, then we will be violating the rules and the charter, and he required it, so then I'm not going to do it. If, any, if he d does not have a problem with it, I would have done that in the first place. He has a problem with it, then I'm going to go by the rules. Now, you guys can think it's wrong or not, but that's the way our charter is, and we have just been trying really hard uh, and that's where our rules are to do the best we can. Um, we've had two and three meetings to try to get things out. I'm not doing that for anybody who comes to my committee and wants to be insulting. The alderman kept my board bill about uh, uh, traffic calming in committee, asked me to send him a copy of the uh, what I changed. I sent it to him twice. He let it sit right there, would not pass it out, and I kept telling me he didn't get it. I sent it to him twice and put it in his box. So if he wants for it to be like this, I am more than happy to, to, to do just what he asks. And I'm not going to bring it back. I'm going to, if we have to get it out, that is the requirement. That is what he has required. Now, that is what it is. May I, Madam Chair? Alderwoman Howard. I, I guess what I, you know, what we're saying is that, you know, if if we are not following the rules, we haven't been following the rules. So, you know, to me at this point, if if you choose to do this, and you know, if the committee, if if you want to run the committee that way, then there's no point in in voting on things. I guess I feel sure it like is. If so there's a and that's a di big difference in this. There's a way to do it. I, there was nothing that I was going to do to him. I'm never before. You know how many board bills that I vote no on, and then I still tell you, let's get this stuff out. And sometimes things, right. 
No, so if but, you, but if you come to me and you ask me, I don't want you to do it like this, Sharon. You're not following, and you whine to me about I'm not following the rules, and we really have been doing the best thing. Then at that point, I have to do what you ask. And you have to be careful what you ask, because if you ask for that, that's what you get. But we weren't part now, of that. Now, other than that, I'm okay. And I guess what, you weren't I mean, following it. I, I, we weren't. I, I didn't hear that in the conversation. Sure you were. But I, sure you okay. were. He said it right here on the uh, on the. Uh, okay. That's what he came and complained about. Well, we had a big day yesterday. Anyway, uh, what I, I also want to say is that maybe we should leave this for the debate on the floor and put it out there for everyone because I don't think this is going to be something that you know is going to be. Uh, uh, I, I I think there may be some disagreement amongst the alderman part and let that debate take place on the floor again so i hear what you're saying mm -hmm. i hear the committee i'm not going to entertain a do pass motion um at all so that is just what i'm going to do the alderman can come if he wants to and apologize to this committee and let it be known that we try to be really fair and don't come and try to run my committee because I don't try to run his. And even when he was unfair to me and held my bill for no reason, I still went on. And if he's on the call, that's good. Come in. The alderman is welcome to apologize to this committee. And if he's on the call, he's also welcome to bring his uh, fiscal note. Autumn Boyd, I'm so glad you're here. Do you have a fiscal note for us? I can't hear him. Please unmute him. And wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I need to get off my phone. You can't always stop her. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you fine. Okay, this is an appropriations bill, so I don't believe it requires a fiscal note. Did you get a, this is, it is transferring $5 million, and you could be right, I'm looking at the rules right now, and did, can you refer me to a rules, and did you get any, um, Input from our city from our city council, who would be Mr. Gally. Uh, I didn't get a ruling from that. I'm just going off the top of my head that because it's an appropriations bill, that it, it would not require a fiscal note. I mean, there's and not I, a fiscal note. Is there a fiscal note on bull bill number one that's currently been discussed in ways and means? I don't think no, so. because that that it, that really is an appropriation bill. I don't know if this is an appropriation bill or if this is a it, bill that just transfer funds, which are two. I mean, so I, that's what I'm. You're appropriating funds, right? Uh, and so, I, first thing I said is that you may be right. Okay, didn't you not hear that? No, I did. I'm just we're just having a discussion. Okay, I'm so I'm saying I'm looking this up right now because you could be right, and then if I'm wrong, I don't have a problem saying it. And if I'm not, I still uh, I'm not going to entertain a motion to pass it out without one. So I'm going to look here and look at the rules. You're the ones came to me complaining about I was not following the rules, so I'm going to follow them strictly for you. Okay, and, and, and I, I'm just getting to, what are you talking about? Yesterday, you don't remember coming on here whining about who I could 
and let speak at a bill and telling me that we were uh, simple, that all, what we are simply supposed to do. You don't remember doing that? You you have convenient amnesia, do you? Well, let's let's not be disrespectful all the time. I'm not disrespectful. I, 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 You're the ones that was disrespectful. I have never come before your committee, no matter how you handle anything, and just been disrespectful to you. I've been nothing but respectful. I brought maps of whatever I needed to do. You were disrespectful yesterday. And if you don't know that, that's because you are so busy dealing with you that you did not even consider how many bills we have gone through and passed them out, and it didn't make, make any difference what our vote was. So you were disrespectful, and, and you might consider that. Let that actually sink in and know that you were disrespectful yesterday. Well, first of all, you suggested that I was whining, and I just disagreed that I was whining. Second of all, I have disagreed with you as far as having testimony. The Rules and Engrossment Committee cannot make amendments to a bill, so having testimony is like a moot point for real. I mean, that's not the... That, I'm not going to argue that point. You're the chair. Do what you yes, want. Yes, you are I'm arguing the bit point. That you're arguing the point right now. Because that, even though we do think that we do, it still has to be a third reading in which people can vote. So you can bring information. And if you are trying to keep information out of... Uh, the, the public, uh, so the public won't know information. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that with you. If you, when you came, I immediately let, let you speak, and I'm not going to do it with other people. So your committee, you can decide. Oh, they didn't do this, and I'm not going to let them. I'm not going to do that. I don't do it with people who are for me. I don't do it for people who are against me. I'm not doing it right now with you. That's not how I believe that a committee should be run. And especially when you're taking people's money, I would have gone out of my way and I have called people and said, hey, look, this, this, and this is going on. So I disagree with how you did that. I don't agree with it at all. And so anybody who comes before my committee who wants to testify, I will. Now, you should not have come and whined to me about testimony in my committee. And you're still doing it. And you're still being disrespectful instead of saying, well, there's nothing that prevents it. Okay, she's doing her committee. I do mine. Whatever you've asked me to do in a committee, I've done it. And I never came and said, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing it this way. I don't think you should have held my bill. But I didn't come and whine about it. I just accepted it the way it was. Old woman, I'm not whining. And I... Yes, you are. You are whining. You think you can run my committee and yours, and you cannot. Please get some help. I beg your pardon? What did you say? Don't worry about it. You have anything else to say? Do you uh, have, can you point to me where this is an appropriation bill and therefore should okay. not have a, okay. Let me find the rule for you. Um, okay, please do. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to city code. 1.28.090 proposed board bill with associated cost requiring fiscal note. A proposed board bill shall prior to introduction be accompanied by a fiscal note if such board bill authorized any of the following. An expansion of services which entails additional costs beyond that approved in the current budget adopted. An undertaking of a new service for which no funding is provided in the current adopted city budget, commitment to city funding in the future under certain specified conditions, and issuance of bonds, no to lease purchase agreement, which may require additional funding beyond that approved in the current budget. Please and slow down, sir. Please slow down. I'm listening to you. Okay, go it, on. I'll just wait for you to just read it because- No, 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 no. I want you to go ahead and read it into the record. I, I, I think that's fair. It, go ahead and read into the record. It's a lot of reading. I, it's, okay. It's what I expect it. Okay, okay, then I will go to it, okay? Well, I didn't hear you. You were talking so fast. And so I will have to uh, to stop my, re not stop it, but just stop my uh, video so I can go to it. Okay. Where is it? Um, chapter 1.28.090. Okay, just a minute. St. Louis City Code. Okay, and it's chapter what? Uh, it's 1.28.090. Okay, is it in title one? That's what I'm, yeah, let me, I just. Someone is, is humming and we can hear it. Okay, yes, title one. 
Okay, I'm going to it now. So it will not come up. That's fine. Okay. That's a search by ordinance that comes up, but every time I try to bring the code up, let me see if I can get it a different way. Title one, okay. And what's the subsection? Uh, I'm Autumn. Gonna, I went to something else. Let me get it again. Um, it's 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 one point two eight point oh nine oh. I'm sorry. Alderman, uh, please, uh, Alderman Howard, please let us continue this. One point. Uh, what is it, Alderman? One point two eight. Yes. Thank you. Nine zero. Okay, I'm sorry. One, I got 1.28 and then it's 0 0.50, did you say? 0 0.090, Madam Chair. 0 0.90. Okay. They will not. Proposed bill with, uh, okay. Okay, so here's my question. Do you think that the treasurer's office is a city department or office? Alderman? Do I think it's a city? The treasurer's office, the treasurer is a county office. So you don't think it's not a city department or office? I'm just asking you this, okay? By the way, this was done two years ago as well without a fiscal note. I wasn't here two years ago. I don't speak to what was happening two years ago. Two years ago, everybody just signed off on board bills. We had so many mistakes, it's not funny. Alderman, I think you are correct. Hello, are you there? I'm here. Okay, I did not find, because the treasurer's office is not a city department, and therefore you are correct, and it does not require a fiscal note. Excuse me, I gotta come back, I'm sorry. I'm coming back on to Zoom. Okay.
All the women's hives are on mute. Okay, thank you. The alderman is correct. What he says, I went and read through it. Um, so we do not need a fiscal note. So I apologize for saying that we did because I thought that we did and I actually thought I had read through it. Um, I don't apologize for the rest because I do think you were very disrespectful to my committee and I hope that you will hear that. Um, and in the future, it, all things that you come before my committee will be to the letter of the law until you apologize to my committee. Is that understood? I have no reason to apologize because I'm entitled to my- I know you never do. But you, you're not entitled to come and challenge my authority in my committee unless I'm going to do that at the same thing. I have never done that to you. I just and there was no reason for you. Hold on, I just challenged you on the rules. I have a right to but challenge you. But you didn't have, you, but there was nothing that you not said. Well, she shouldn't be able to talk. That's not a challenge. A challenge on the rule. Let me ex explain to you how you do it. You just did it when I said, tell me what the rule, that's a challenge on the rules, okay? You come with the rules, you say, this is the rule. You do not challenge things that other people can do. You come with the rules, if you're right, I will stand up. I stood up for you when other people didn't stand up for you. But you just don't get to check, oh, well, she shouldn't be able to talk. Yes, she can talk. And wow. there's nothing in our rules that prevent her from it. Wait. Okay, moving right along. No, we're not moving right along. I'm the chair of this committee. I want you to understand there is a proper way to challenge the rules, and I have no problem with it. And if I'm wrong, I have no problem with it. But when you just come and say you don't think she should talk, that is not the proper way. If there is something in these rules that say I cannot allow people to speak, please bring them, quote the rule to me, and I am a rules person, and I will either agree or disagree with you. But just because you don't want the treasurer to present what she has to say is not a challenge of any such rule. And you know me to be a rule person. And so I think that's even more insulting because I did not indicate that I would do anything that's wrong. And if I'm ever wrong, and I, I it, right now, I say, Alderman, you're right. That's what I do. But you don't hear what you've done because you don't want to hear it. So let me be clear about something, Alderwoman. Um, it wasn't about the treasurer or her staff. I was making a statement in general about making presentations before rules and engrossment. This had nothing to do with the treasurer herself or her staff. I just want to be clear with that because you want to make everything personal all the time. It's not personal. Politics is not personal for me. It is an absolutely personal for you because why would you care if she made a presentation or not? And again, if you, if you had a rule that said she could not, then all you had to do was bring it to me and say, Rule 2.5 says that you cannot have presentations uh, before this committee, that it would be incorrect. We have had presentations all the time. You are the only one that has complained about us having presentation. In fact, people come to us and want to present, to present, and we have let them do it, and we have not had any problems. You have been the problem because it is an ongoing personal problem with you. I've told you this in private. I'll tell you this now. So it's ongoing. And so you brought it into my committee because as long as you kept it out, I was fine. But you would not leave it alone. And you came into here talking about it. And that's why we're having this discussion here because I want to make it clear. I have never prevented anyone who wanted to say something to this committee from uh, doing so. And I have never uh, prevented you. When you showed up, and you disagree, I still let you come and talk. So just let me run my committee unless you have a valid rule. I will make sure in the future that I bring a rule to present to you if I disagree with a rule, okay? Or something that you're doing I think is inappropriate, okay? We can agree on that. I can't hear you because you're muted. You're muted. They keep muting it back. Okay. Did you ever find a rule that says that I could not take a uh, testimony before my committee? Oh, mama, I just said in the future, I will make sure. I, you didn't answer my question. Did you ever find a rule or not? I didn't look for one. Because there's no rule. So let me tell you that. Oh, there is no that? rule that says that. Oh, why would you ask me? Okay. You answer to it. Because, because you came before my committee and complained like I had done something wrong. And so I want you to understand there is no rule. I will continue to take testimony. I will continue to let you come before my committee. If you have something you want to say, I will continue to do it this, that way and you will not stop me. I don't want to. 
today. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, moving on. Um, the alderman was correct in that there is not a uh, requirement for a um, uh, fiscal note. So, um, any, anyone have any questions, starting with the alderman from the uh, 15th, have any questions about this bill? No further questions. Um, alderman from, I'm sorry, alderwoman from the 14th. I missed No that. questions. Um, alderman from the 18th. I don't have any questions, Madam Chair. Okay, um, Madam uh, Treasurer, um, so I'm sorry, I was incorrect, because I did think there should be a fiscal uh, a note also, but in reading, going back over it, I don't think there should be. Is there anything else you want to add before we proceed with uh, uh, this board bill? Uh, no, I would just ask the committee to uh, already consider the information uh, that we have given them. Also, um, Madam Chair, you asked for a copy of the s &P report. I emailed that to you as well as the other members of the committee um, that talks about the um, negative outlook placed upon the transportation sector at the beginning of the pandemic um, and how that affects um, transportation sectors or, or um, enterprise funds and municipalities that are heavy in that sector. Uh, so you can read that at your leisure as well. Um, again, I just want to reiterate that uh, we provided information that um, should this continue, um, this will definitely cause a credit downgrade, not just because we're falling below reserves, but also because S&P um, uh, did give us a warning when the $10 million was taken uh, that any further um, reduction of reserves that goes to the city's general revenue fund could also trigger a downgrade. Right. Anyone else with you have anything? Is that it? Uh, Mr. Boyd or Mr. Comer? Just want to thank the committee for their time and, uh, you know, our willingness to answer the questions that, you know, reiterate our willingness to answer uh, questions that you have regarding our bill. Thank you. Okay. At this time, then I'm open to a motion. So moved. Uh, there's no motion on the floor. Oh, I make a motion to pass out board bill number. I don't have it. Is it number eight? I don't know. No, what I'm is sorry. That? It's number. I think it's 13. 13. Wait, let me make sure. Yeah. It's 13. Okay. Board bill number 13 with a due pass recommendation. Second. Second. Objection. Um, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Green. Aye. Alderman Todd. Aye. Chairwoman Tyus. No. Three aye votes and one no vote. By your vote, you pass board bill uh, 13 out with a due pass recommendation. And um, I, deal, I do want to note again, I will not do anything special for Alderman Boyd until he apologizes, okay? I, I am not going to do anything for him. I will not treat him any better than he treats this committee. And so if he does not understand what he has done, that is on him because um, he came to disrupt my committee and to whine about having somebody testify. Testimony does not hurt anybody. And more information is not the problem we have at this Board of Aldermen. It's less information. So I will continue to do that. And if any of you all have a problem with that, which none of you have ever said with people coming before us, then you need to speak to me um, and tell me where that shouldn't be done. But as long as I'm the chair of this committee or any other, I will allow people to come and, and, and bring their diverse opinions about what should happen. And I find it appalling that the street department, a street committee, did not hear this testimony that we heard today. Is there anything else before this committee?
Hello? No, ma'am. Okay. No, uh, okay. no further business, I don't think. I, okay. Uh, at this point, then, we will uh, adjourn this meeting until our, uh, I'm sorry, yes, adjourn this meeting and to our next meeting, which will be next Wednesday. Uh, and I understand that it will be uh, at our regular time since we don't have a uh, Ways and Means Committee. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.